Check out how short this loading screen is here, guys. As long as this is hard drive bound. Oh my god. I lied to you last episode. I said all my computer stuff was done, but it, it's so not. I realized the new SSD that I bought, I had like, it was a SATA 3 drive, but my motherboard only has SATA 2 on it. So I bought like a PCIe uh, card to slot in it so I could have SATA 3. And then it turned out it slowed it the hell down. So today I just unplugged all of that and I'm suddenly experiencing much bigger speeds, which is awesome. Anyway, so hello everyone. We're in this cave. Um, at the end of the last episode, of course, we had a grueling boss fight. What I never told you last episode is that I cut a huge section out where I was stumbling over my words, stood around here, and uh, <laughs> then the enemies ended up killing Tikrit. So I was like, God damn it, I'll reload it, I'll redo it. And then it took me like half an hour to actually clear the whole room. I've made this look a lot easier than it actually was. Um, but now we get to um, reap the rewards of having cleared this place out and get basically a whole ton of loot. I wonder whether the devs were expecting you to collect this loot as you were initially exploring or not. Um, but let's start with the main stuff. First of all, last episode, we got our second power gem. That's fantastic. We still have this, um, this map here that we found a little bit earlier in a chest. Um, and maybe you guys have got some ideas on where that is. Here we just got this sack. This has a recipe um, for a transmuter's potion. Now this will cost us one mudwort and one falcon skyer, but requires alchemy level four. Now if we had been maxing our way into that, we could have that already, but of course we do not. Um, and Tikrit is only just starting off with the alchemy stuff. He'll be there pretty soon. Um, so what do we actually have? This is a level 2 one, the uh, shield potion. We could make one of these if you guys want. Etherweed and Mudwort. So let's try this out. And in fact, that's what we just got in that chest, wasn't it? So an Etherweed are these. These are the glowing ones you find underwater mostly. Gives you energy. And Mudwort is this one. Wait, hold on. That's not Mudwort. That, well, no, that has to be the that has to be mudwort. Oh well, we're not even level two yet. What am I doing? It's currently very late at night. Okay, so you have to forgive me. Right. Okay. Yeah, that is mudwort. We'll do that in a second. We also found this, the Legend of Kilhagen, which I read out at the end of last episode. Um, and I guess we'll just try to commit to memory for now. Um, there's a lockpick on the floor, as you can see here. What I'll probably do is just do a lot of rapid little cuts here. And every time I find something on the floor, I'll say, "Hey guys, I found this." All right, and uh, we'll sweep the room pretty much in. Instantly. Are we ready? Okay, let's do it. Let's go. All right, here's a bag, and inside the bag we've got uh, three bombs, which later Papa can hold. A crystal shard of healing. Ah, so this is a new type of item here, and um, this heals all wounds and raises dead champions back to life. We can right-click to use this. Of course, we want, don't want to do that yet. But this is basically like one of our save crystals in our hands. Uh, that's going to be held by Loto Pafo because it's quite lightweight. It sort of fits with the alchemy idea, but Tikrit's kind of full with stuff anyway. He seems to be the mule for our completely unnecessary pellets as it stands. So that's kind of cool. It's like we chipped off a bit of the save crystal. And here we've got something called the hub key. This is awesome and we'll get to use pretty soon. Now, we've already been to the hub, right? That was the place with all the teleporters. You remember there was a uh, hub location here in the forest in the uh, swamp somewhere where well, we may need that key for that right here we've got a skull on the floor another skull I can't remember how many skulls there were in total um, in Grimrock 1 but we've already got an awful lot they just suddenly flood in uh, someone was mentioning actually the idea of using a, um, a sack to hold the skulls which is a great idea so we've got this one here on Loto so now Jonker's going to have um, one crate filled with food and a sack filled with skulls as well. That seems pretty cool. And you'll notice as well that this keeps his stats buffed. So he's got 33 strength. If we lift the bag away and now have a look, he only has 28. And that overweighs Loto Perfo. It's okay, Mr. Puny Lizard Man cannot carry skulls. Jonker can do that just fine. Um, and so this is quite nice. I actually think that was um, something that only had to patch in. In, in Grimrock 1 and was actually impossible for a while. I've heard a lot of weird stories with this game about how apparently some stuff is just totally broken like vitality apparently was totally broken. There was a small patch today I have no idea what it did um, but maybe it started to fix these things. I'm just going to treat the game as if all the information I've told you, which is the intended way this stuff is supposed to work actually works because hey if someone's watching this Six months down the line or something, these launch bugs may not really mean anything. Now we got another blood drop, so you'll see, like, we're really starting to roll in them. We've got eight of them right now. More pellets right there. There's some mud wet on the floor right here as well, easily missed. Among the grass. Oh, I saw this really cool, I think it was an NVIDIA demo. 
showing some of the new engines uh, they're using to like render grasses and stuff and how physics like if you walk through the, the grasses it pushes it all to the side it looked insane maybe I'll leave a link if I can remember it in the description if not someone remind me and I'll do it that stuff looked mental I can't wait for games to start showing that kind of stuff off anyway I think we're pretty much done I think that's everything in here I couldn't find anything else on the floor may have missed like one uh, blood drop cap or something like that nothing major though that lockpick and the chest uh, um, and the sack sorry with the key and the skull namely are the main ones so we We've got that. That really was all that we had to do in there. You might have expected some alternate exit out of the room. No, it was just a big kind of boss chamber. And you'll notice this is already a lot of the underground for this entire map complete. In fact, we have one tiny little room left to show off. And then as far as I'm aware, we've seen everything that is to be seen in the Herder's Den. I don't often use these terms, but we've got the Herder's Den, the river tunnels, the flooded dungeon, Twigger, and so forth. So um, it was this gate here. And what did we find just now in that room? We found the hub key, uh, which is here. We also found the mine key earlier, remember, in that chest. Well, let's use it and finally open this thing up. We could have done this without going into like the boss chamber. And let's see what we've got. Well, this looks like kind of a scary room. Is this the first time we've seen fireballs constantly f flying all over the place? Pretty sure it is. Um, so what could this mean? This uh, has a sign that says that this is the Rune Master's Trial. This could immediately make sense to you guys. It did to me. I felt kind of smart. It was pretty cool. Over here, we've got a save crystal. You could, of course, use this to regen yourself up, heal yourself if you had died in the big room here. At the end of the day, it's a long walk back to any save crystals. May I remind you guys, we haven't found a single one on the surface yet. So the closest one would be way back there. So this is pretty cool. Here we find something called the timepiece. This is great. So um, we can right-click to use this, and it will give us a message that says, It is three hours before noon. Um, if there's only one hour, it's still so it still like uses plural, which is kind of silly. It's like, it is one hours before noon. But this tells you the time. It also actually unlocks um, something kind of cool with the UI, which maybe you guys didn't notice. If we rest now, you'll see you actually get this kind of clock appear as you're resting. Fantastic little UI tweak. It's just a bit of convenience, much like the compass. Perfect little thing to have on Loto. Whoa, where's our compass? Oh, there it is. Perfect little thing to have on Loto Patho. So that's uh, pretty much everything except this puzzle here. So what do we do? We've got the Rune Master's puzzle. It's showing us a fireball. We have six things. Well, if you think about runes, which we use to cast spells, we also have nine uh, different marks. So what if we treat the floor as a giant spell grid? Okay, that's cool. But then what would we want to cast? Well, what about a fireball? So the spell for fireball, and I'm doing this off the top of my head here, so hopefully I can remember. The spell for fireball is the top three runes. Now, we don't even have a scroll teaching us this yet. So I'm almost tempted. Oh, God, it's not the top three. That's really bad. Was it the top three and one on the side? Yes, okay, it was the top three and one on the side. See, this is kind of interesting because we don't necessarily know how to cast these spells yet. So I think there is a chance they want us to come back later. But, you know, um, fireballs were pretty common in the previous game. I think a lot of players will know that kind of stuff. And now by doing that, you'll notice we've actually changed the pattern that's appearing here. We now have an ice spell. Well, this one we've been casting a lot already, so we don't have to feel bad about entering this one it's just the three at the bottom correct well now let's see ah so now it's got lightning bolts the lightning bolts a little bit harder and i'm racking my brain right now trying to remember what exactly the pattern was i guess i should have gone into this episode a little bit more prepared was it all up the side here i think it was something like something like it it like arced its way through the middle or something like that there's no way that was it was it damn it hmm Oh, I'm suddenly very concerned. Ah, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I may remember it. It's one of these weird ones where it, like, zigzags. So, try that. Yeah, there we go. Yes, awesome. So, uh, that will break it open. And you'll get a fr final frostbolt goes through. It'll hit the uh, hole on the other side and uh, finish the puzzle so you can reclaim whatever you needed. Um, it basically was just the kind of three elemental bolt spells. We get to move in. Now, if you're a complete noob at the game, obviously, you might have to uh, keep returning to the bog as you were playing, and it could be a bit of a hassle. It's probably the more true way of it, but um, eventually you would find scrolls detailing how you cast all of this stuff. For us, though, we can just move straight in, and uh, we've got some bread here for Jonker. All right, we'll eat it. He's quite far off of his next level, which I'm a little bit sad about. Um, and otherwise, not very much in the room. I do remember looking quite closely for a secret in here, but I couldn't find anything. Ah, here's some uh, mud work. See how well those are hidden? Um, but here, on this pedestal, you will find the Serpent Staff. Um, now, the Serpent Staff is a really interesting item. Uh, Lotopath has got a bit too much in his inventory. So we'll keep it on Sanon for now. I mean, I guess holding a staff with him. Now, uh, this says that it is a staff resembling a golden snake. 
Curious, and we can use an ability called Spit for 15 energy by holding down uh, the mouse button to cast it. So here we go. We will have Sanin wielding uh, some kind of focus plus a staff. Pretty cool. And if he holds that down, it fires this little thing out. So it doesn't really look very good for combat though, right? We'll have to check it out, especially in terms of just hitting with it. Two to six damage plus strength. Pretty, pretty piss poor. But hey, Sanin's never going to be one to complain. He always likes to hoard his stuff. So far, all we've given him are dusty old tomes to read, and I'm sure he's not very interested in that. So, uh, so yeah, we're fine with there. I'm pretty sure now then, guys. That's everything. That's uh, underground stuff all complete. And uh, let's head back on upstairs. There's. It may seem like a bit of a chore. We've got to go all the way back out. But the way it's designed, it's really not so bad. There you go. This is the stairs. And, uh, and we get outside. So, uh, that's another power gem. The most important thing about all of that, of course, was the power gem. Well, I guess it depends on your perspective. But uh, what do we want to do now? Well, if you remember, there were two new ways forward that I deliberately didn't take us down. Um, I said we'd uh, end up on the other side of that gate. So why don't I hold true to that? Instead of going through the gate, let's head up and break through the roots. And I suppose, maybe you guys can agree with me a little bit with this. The, the completionist, or I don't know, the just game player in me, felt like, oh, I did not need to do that. Felt like I wanted to come through this northern entrance because it was just cutting away twigs, so it seemed like less of a, like a significant way forward than opening up some kind of actual rock gate. Does that make sense? You know, or, or metal or iron barred gate along a rock wall. I don't know. That was my thinking. So, I'm going to save the game. We did see some kind of scary beast here recently. Let's hope he doesn't go too crazy on us. Two hits and down we go. Let's charge our staff and get ready. There we go. It does no damage. As you can see. Oh no, Tikrit, what are you doing? Oh no, it's all this is this is a disaster. Okay, so Tikrit wanted to use some alchemy. You'll notice that Jonka no longer has his weapon. If you rewind, watch very closely, you'll see that this guy steals your equipment. So what we're gonna do is weapon swap here. And we're going to smash him over the head with our Warhammer. Oh, that felt good. Oh my god, there's another one. Wow. Oh no, and he's, he's just lost his shield as well. That's fine though. So this is kind of a mechanic. These guys, these toads, these beasts, will uh, steal your stuff. They will disarm you. They drop some of the mankiest, ho most horrible looking food ever. But it's quite nutritional. They drop toad tongues. So we'll grab a toad tongue there. We'll grab a toad tongue there. We'll re-equip our shield. Now, um, they have some other special abilities too, which hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate or talk about if we don't eventually see them. Um, but yeah, the, these toads, well, that's their main thing. They do a lot of damage too. Um, this is one of the reasons why I think they might want you to go to Sleet Island first, because these things can seriously hurt, especially if some of those like bog flies end up flying around and hurting you too. But here you go, toad tongue. Lots of nutrition here from these. They look horrible. Eating the tongue of another creature? Really? Yeah, it's like people say beef tongue is apparently really, really tasty and delicious, and I'm just like, oh, it just sounds too off-putting. But, uh, but yeah, so they're going to be a source of food. Some of you guys will even comment saying, oh, it seems like you're getting less food as the game goes along. There's less food. I don't know whether I really agree with that. We've had loads of herders, wargs. I, I guess we haven't seen wargs for a while, but most of these dangerous enemies we're fighting still drop food. I mean, some of these flies haven't been the rock elementals, certainly weren't. But these guys are. The guys that we found underground were, I don't know. Um, so I want to watch out for Jonker here. He is actually in danger there. Um, with the amount of health he got to, he was very much in danger of dying. And what I think I'll do is I will concoct him a cheeky little potion here. And remember to unequip the Morton Pestle too. That whole thing with him, with Tikrit there. Oh, no, no, get rid of these. I don't want to craft one of those. That whole thing there with Tikrit not having uh, the bow equipped is so much the kind of thing that when I'm watching Let's Plays and I'm watching videos online, I notice it straight away and I'm just watching. I'm waiting for the person who's playing the game to notice. I'm like, you're such an idiot. How didn't you figure that out? <laughs> but uh, it's because your your attention is always split much further. Here we go. We'll uh, put that back. Fine, Jonker, you can hold the Moron Pestle. And here, Ticker can have his bow back. So, what have we got? Well, uh, you might be surprised, actually. It could feel like we're very thick, deep in the bog here. Uh, very scary. Lots of dangerous enemies around a long way away from the castle. You would be surprised if we drop down in the water here. And yes, I thought for a long time that this water could poison you. It doesn't. Um, here you'll find there is an underwater tunnel. And a fishy for us <laughs> to uh, take us back here into... Um, 
Uh, what's it called? Jesus, the Forgotten River. So yeah, that was the other underwater cave that we sort of saw before and could have potentially gone down. And there you go, uh, we're right back out near the save crystal. So you kind of got two choices again with this map, which uh, uh, in how early you want to go there. The thing is, if you come through this tunnel, it's a long swim. Well, okay, it's not that long of a swim. It's kind of a scary swim considering when you're first in this area of the game, you're literally just encountering water. But you will come out around some dangerous toads, the flies can come across, attack you, and it's not going to be entirely clear where to even go from here. So um, I wouldn't really recommend people do that, but you know, it's possible, it's an option. There's something else really weird as well, another exit to the map that I can't wait to show you guys. So let's just get our bearings here. Um, what have we got? We've got two rocks here. I guess whenever they give you rocks, it's almost like they're going to be useful somehow. We've got that guy creeping along, who we're going to do a lot of damage to. Uh, have we used our chop attack just yet? There you go. So as you can see, they leap as well. There's a chop from Jonker. I didn't see how much damage it did. I was too busy focusing on what I want to cast next. It does a lot of damage. Um, especially if he crits with it, can knock people out quickly. The problem is with stuff like that, when they take so long to cast, you, you may as well just be doing other things. It's kind of a nice little balance. Um, what did he steal from us there? Because we didn't get it back, did we? It was a torch. Oh, there it is. The torch is on the floor. Uh, it's used but not burnt out. Awesome. So, um, what do we want to do? We can't kind of come to a bit of a plateau here. We'll look over here. This I don't want to break just yet. We've got this small um, little building here with a chest on the inside. Hello. Cool, those things would be a lot scarier if I knew Sanon wasn't just such a genius at disposing them. So, we've got a chest behind there, but no discernible way to get inside it. Um, and over here, we've got a teleporter. Do you want to just go for it, guys, and go in the teleporter? Sure, let's do it. So, what do we have now? Ah! There's an orb of power over there. Look at that. We've also got some extra pellets just on the floor here, which I just managed to grab. Sorry about that, just a bit of a weird cut there. The water, again, you could climb through and we'd actually get back up, so the teleport didn't really take us too far. But you'll notice we're now actually at the westernmost area of the swamp, and there is no real other um, way to get up here. There's no ladder. You have to go through that teleporter, which is weird. I don't know. I mean, is it really that different using the teleporter getting here as opposed to just climbing up a ladder? Well, uh, I guess the devs thought so. And it seems kind of weird, right? It seems like it's setting up that something might be about to happen. Oh my god, it happens anyway! Wow, okay. Um, so yeah, I thought when you picked up the, the gem, it triggered an ambush. I guess just walking near the gem triggers an ambush. We get tons of Zarktons. They all come out of the water, they all go crazy. Loto Papho is a little bit low. I don't really have any potions prepared, so we're just swapping back there for now. Uh, and yeah, they will all just go mad, so just find yourself a place that you can back yourself into, in my opinion. You've got to be careful in Grimrock. Some battles are all about moving a lot, like when they can drop poison fields on you and stuff. It's all about keeping moving. It's always keeping on the fly, not getting out position, and definitely not getting surrounded. Other times, getting uh, with your back to a wall is the absolute best thing you can possibly do. Wow, the cooldowns felt long there. Come on, get back here. Alright, he's dead as well. So yeah, a bit of an ambush there. Not a particularly scary one. As you notice, I didn't even stop to save. I didn't give away that something was happening. Um, here we've got some more black moss. Black moss, the most delicious stuff in the entire game. I almost just cast a fireball on a bush in front of us, which would have damaged us pretty substantially. That was a bit silly of me. If we break this, we'll find even more stuff that we can use with our alchemy. And then we go, look, this is our prize! Another power gem. How great is this? We've got three already. Why did I give that to Sanon? Okay, we can move back into the front. Alright, so we managed to get a power gem. That's fantastic. Uh, we'll end the video here for now, guys. Uh, you've probably noticed there was no audio on this one. God damn it. Yesterday we had no cursor, and today, because I swapped again to try and fix the cursor, there was no audio. I'm dying here. Uh, tomorrow will be back to normal anyway. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, we'll get the final power gem just tomorrow. Show off a really awesome, weird thing in the water. And um, we'll be all that a bit closer to getting into the castle. Cheers, guys. Hope you have a great day. See you next time.